Attention deficit hyperactive disorder levels have just skyrocketed over the last two years. In fact, right now, over 10% of kids in the school system live under this label's restrictions. Now, if you're a parent for this, this can be heartbreaking. It's your kiddo not able to sit still in class, not able to focus, feels like they're working hard and trying to get good grades, but they just can't. It can even affect them in social situations. Now, if you've tried everything, if you've tried the nutrition, you've tried you know, the social, emotional, counseling, behavioral programs, all those things, and they haven't worked or got you a little bit of success, but not all the way there. I wanna to talk today about what science calls the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve has an intricate connection to ADHD. And I wanna tell you this, both on the science side and on the story side, because in practice, um, at PwC Chiropractic, we have seen a lot of kids that struggle with ADHD, behavioral just struggles and attention struggles and movement struggles. And we have helped so, so many of them by way of this vagus nerve. Now, I want to put this all together with you first story-wise. Met a girl about five years ago named Mabel. Now, Mabel was an awesome girl. I mean, she was ahead in everything. She was so bright. She was so intuitive. You could ask her a question and she would answer it before you even finished. But mom came to us because she kept getting emails home from school that she wasn't focused, that she was you know, struggling to pay attention in class. She could never finish her work. Um, and then behavior started, she couldn't sit still in class, constantly would get up from her seat. And the school started to mention medications. Now Mabel's mom, was just on edge with that. She's like, when is it going to happen that I'm going to have to go this route? Because I can't find any other solutions with it. And she's just not succeeding at her grade level. Now, so many parents like Mabel's live on edge in this. They're in sympathetic fight or flight too, because they're just nervous. Okay. Is my kiddo going to be able to sit still is going to behave in these situations. And that's really when I connected with Mabel's mom is during our day two consult when we were chatting, Mabel wanted to move a ton and she saw something that she wanted to see at the other end of the table that we're talking about um, Mabel's results in her test. And Mabel just hops up on the table, literally on all fours, crawls over, grabs it and, and, and goes up. And mom, I just see it in her face. She puts her head down and she's like, I am so sorry. And in that moment I said, that is totally totally okay. That is exactly what we are talking about today because in Mabel's mind, she is a go-getter. That is her strength to get after it, to have that hyperactive sympathetic tone nervous system that wants to do, do, do and go, go, go. It just doesn't have the brake pedal to scale back. So assured mom say, Hey, this is totally okay. It's all right. I got four boys at home at two. They're jumping all over me. We want to work with Mabel to help her know when is the right place to jump on that table, when's not the right time to jump on that table with it. And so when we look at the science side of it, Mabel's mom, when we went over that report, had even heard of the vagus nerve. She just always associated with the gut brain or brain gut connection. You know, she's been researching on Google. She was looking through all these things and that brain gut connection, she, she felt was really like, okay, how do I improve her diet? How do I add the supplements in? How do I get her nutrition at the right level to then calm the brain? And she was part of the way there. The interesting thing about the vagus nerve is the vagus nerve is a sensory pathway. In fact, 75% of all sensory fibers within the body go through this vagus nerve system in the upper cervical, upper neck, spinal area. Now that is so important because not only is the vagus nerve a singling nerve to the gut, it's a receptor from the gut. And if there's a disproportionate influence of a lot of stress coming from the body, the gut, the heart, the lungs, all these autonomic functions, and that's overwhelming the vagus nerve, it's not going to function properly. And the vagus nerve's main jobs to do is to rest, relax, digest, and being able to calm the body. It's called the rest and relax nerve. And so if that nerve is irritated, if that sensory pathway of that 75% of neurology coming up to your brain is just noisy and loud, that's going to be really, really tough for Mabel to be able to flip that switch off if her body is telling her brain, hey, we got to go 100 miles an hour. We got to jump across that table and grab that pen, grab those markers, grab those things. 
in the moment with that. And so I don't want to get too sciencey with you today, but I really want to go through three main causes of how that vagus nerve signaling gets disrupted. And this will be important for you parents because this is how I tie it together with my kids is whenever there's a struggle, I want to know the root cause of it. And so I take these and I kind of, you know, look through it through that lens and say, okay, did this happen to me? Did these, did this sequence of events, did this perfect storm of situations happen that leads to the struggle that they're going through now? So when we look at vagus nerve struggles, it's not only, you know, from the diet side of it, from the toxin side of it, from that, the vagus nerve pathways can be influenced by physical stress, emotional stress, as well as environmental nutritional stress. And so a big connection in the vagus nerve is actually from the birth process, specifically birth trauma. What I mean by birth trauma is if there was a vacuum, forceps, longer birth, manually assisted birth, a long time labor, those tend to put a lot of tension in the spine in a little baby in this upper neck region. These tracks in this neurology up here are extremely sensitive especially at birth. Now, what can happen if there's stress up here, physical especially, is it can cause neurology to change. It can tell the vagus nerve, hey, the signals that you're going to pick up, instead of them being easy and comfortable and rest and relax, they are going to be more protection, fight or flight. Hey, I don't feel comfortable in this environment. This is why a lot of babies post birth with difficult physical trauma led births deal with colic, deal with constipation, struggle to calm down. You know, Vermont oftentimes start the motor system early. And when we look at kiddos that struggle with ADHD, those are a lot of the same symptoms that they have in their case histories. They struggled with all of those things first because of the birth trauma aspect. There was an insult to that vagus nerve pathway very early on. And then instead of growing out of that, a kiddo like Mabel, just grew into more extremes of behavior, attention struggles, and wanting to go really, really fast. In fact, in Mabel's case, she struggled for years with constipation, struggling to use the restroom, um, even at school. And that was still a struggle for mom. And that's why she had done all her research into the vagus nerve. She just didn't know the connection between the behavior and the hyperactivity side of it. Now, the second connection with vagal stress is developmental and growth stress. Now, the vagus nerve being a sensory nerve, we think about as picking up what's going on in our environment. And so when our kiddos struggle with sensory issues at two or three years old, when they struggle with different types of foods or immune struggles, those are all sensory inputs on the body that go to the brain. This can further push that vagus nerve into a more sympathetic or more stressed state. If that's more stressed, it's gonna cause the body to want to go fast and the response is gonna be noise in, noise out. So they are constantly going fast. They are constantly moving through things. They can't focus. They can't sit down and do their homework because they're always wanting to be in a safe space and that safe space for them is moving very fast, body and mind. The other long-term side of this, so number three, developmentally what that turns into is more tired outness. That's what we see in our teenagers or a lot of times our older kids. It's where, you know, they've got that intestinal discomfort. They might have some anxiety with that. Their sleepiness. Um, it can even affect our heart and our lungs with breathing and heart palpitations and nervousness. All these things, hallmark struggles with long-term ADHD because the vagus nerve for so long has gotten stuck in this chronic cycle. Now, much like Mabel, I'm sure you know, you've went to different doctors for this, you've tried different nutritions for this. The protocol for kiddos that struggle with ADHD has to be unique because we know that if that vagus nerve has been stuck for a long time, it's going to take frequency and time to be able to heal that. That's why in our office, we have everything set up to create unique care plans, to uniquely find out the cause um, of it, the deep root cause of it. And so that's why every time kiddos like Mabel come in, we have moms, dads, doctors that are willing to work with them and really have a consult to find out, okay, history-wise, how do I go back and find out what that root cause is? Then we do what we call neurologically-based insight scans. Insight scans are awesome 
because they show us where the stress is in the nervous system. With ADHD and hyperactivity, we find the vast majority of our objective findings in these tests show stress right up here, right around the entry point of the vagus nerve into the brain. We also see it in the gut. I cannot tell you how many moms like Mabel's have seen these scans and been like, oh my goodness, I knew that's exactly where you would find stress. And honestly, that's why I love doing this video because we oftentimes will see that history and scan match up exactly. And that means we can get to work. That means it's not that anything you've been doing nutritionally, supplement wise, behavioral counseling is wrong. It's just deeper in the nervous system and you calm that nervous system and it helps everything else go better. The nutrition, the behavioral modifications, the star charts, and everything else in between. So that's why it's so important to dig deep to that cause and, and get there just like with Mabel. Now, Mabel, as I said, she struggled with constipation. She struggled with sleep. She struggled with focus and attention in school. What was so cool after we started to care for Mabel is after about two weeks under care, mom started to notice not only would she go to sleep earlier and better, she would actually have to wake her up for school before she was up and at him, probably like a lot of your kids, at 6 a.m. It's like, I'm ready to go, I'm dressed, I got the backpack on, I'm ready to go to school, and we are just rolling out of bed very, very slowly as parents. Now, she started to sleep into the fact where mom had to wake her up for school and be like, hey, we gotta get going, like you are just in sleep mode. Um, and so that improved, constipation started to improve. And then what was really cool is she started to get just no emails from her teacher. In fact, when she went in to her next parent teacher conferences, her teacher was curious, what have you been doing with Mabel? Because I have seen a complete 180 in the classroom where now she can sit through a lesson. Now she brings her homework in complete. Now she's you know even writing more clearly. It was so, so cool to see those changes that all started with the softer signs of the nervous system rest and digest that the vagus nerve controls. So it was no wonder that she's sleeping better, she's going to the bathroom better, and then overall within her world, within what she did in school and home, she was calmer. That's the connection between the vagus nerve and ADHD. And that's why I wanted to make this video because there is that deeper neural connection. And as a parent, you've probably felt that in your gut that there's just more to it. Um, that it's not just, okay, what can I do from the outside in? It's how is their body responding from the inside out? And so that's why we wanna help you today. If your child is struggling with any of the above, if they can't sit through school, if they're having trouble making friends, if they can't focus on things, if they struggle through their homework, it could be the vagus nerve. That's what we wanna go through and test that and see if that's the root cause, because if that's the root cause, game on. We can help it. We can get the nervous system balanced and then everything else that you've done healthily in your life is gonna work so much better when that nervous system is behind all that with momentum. So hope this finds you well. We would love it if you know um, a family who maybe needs to hear this, a mom or dad who needs to hear this, please share this. We would love to just share this message with as many parents as possible because we know it is just not easy if you've tried everything and your child is still struggling with hyperactivity. So we can't wait to help. Um, be blessed today. Take care. We'll see you guys later.